Welcome to this video in the Matter Unit. This is 1.0 Phases of Matter, where we are going to introduce the general properties of solids, liquids, and gases, and talk about how to draw their particle models. Following this lesson, you should be able to answer the following. What does each phase look like on a particle level? How does each arrangement of the particles contribute to the general properties of the phases that we observe? In terms of movement, how do the particles behave in each phase? And how do I ultimately draw a particle model of a solid, liquid, or a gas? Before we get started today, please make sure that you have your chemistry notebook. We're gonna need that to jot down our facts and draw our models in, as well as our trusty Ticonderoga pencil. So without any further ado, let's get started. So in our introductory lesson, we talk a little bit about what it means to be matter, something having mass and volume. So the state or the phase of matter that we encounter on an everyday basis is always a direct result of the internal particle arrangement. So here we are actually looking at, let's say, water. And we can see here we have solid liquid and gaseous water. Well, when we look closer and we go from the macroscopic to the microscopic, we can see that water has an arrangement of its particles that is significantly different in each phase. And that's really the crux of today's lesson is to be able to understand for each phase what we look like on a particle level in a very general way. Let's dive in deep to our lesson and start talking about the solid. Now, if we go microscopic and we look at a solid with our eyes, we are going to see that they take on a pretty predictable form and they come as little crystals. Now, these are certainly larger than the crystals that you would see in a salt shaker, but they are crystalline nonetheless. But in chemistry, we really don't deal often with the macroscopic. We deal mostly with the microscopic. So we experience solids taking the general shape of something like this. This is what is known as a crystalline lattice. The particles in a solid will always exist in a fixed repeating geometric pattern, and that is our lattice. The arrangement is sometimes a little different, as you guys have seen with minerals and earth science, but nonetheless, they're going to look pretty much like this. If we take a closer look, we are going to also see that there is very little space between the particles. And that accounts for the property that solids are generally incompressible, which means we cannot squeeze them together to take up less space, or chemistry term, volume. Looking even closer, we are going to see that even though it looks like these crystals are not moving at all on the microscopic level, they are vibrating. So solids do indeed move, they vibrate. And the warmer or the hotter that your solid is, the more rapid the vibrations will be. Now, the big ticket item that we have to do is we have to be able to draw the particle model of a solid. And so the way that we do that is we take into account its general properties of having definite shape and definite volume and existing in a lattice. So when we draw a particle diagram, the first thing we do is we start with particles and we make a row that is orderly because that's what a crystalline lattice is. And we are gonna line up our particles like this. And you know, you don't have to be the perfect artist, doesn't have to be three dimensional, but here's a great example of a crystal lattice. Now, what's great about this? Well, it has a definite shape. You can see that it is taking up the middle of this box here, or if they had you draw it in a beaker on a test. Um, it is not taking the shape of the container, meaning it's not flowing this way or that way. That's not happening. And we put enough particles to determine whether or not this was a solid or something else. So you always need to put enough particles in to be able to determine what phase of matter you are looking at. And you're going to get practice on this later. Liquids have the general properties of having a definite volume, but a variable shape. And you guys know that because Lord knows that you have poured drinks into many cups of different sizes and beakers throughout your journey in science. Liquids cannot be compressed. They also have very little space between the particles, if any. And in terms of their movement, they are going to be undulating and moving past one another like this. Now, we don't see that with our macroscopic eyes, but if we went to a microscopic level, that is what we would see. 
Now let's draw the particle model of a liquid. We have to take into account the general properties of a liquid, which is variable shape and definite volume. Let's talk about shape first. We wanna make sure if we have to draw the particle model in this box here, remember that liquids are gonna take the shape of the container. So what we wanna do is fill this all the way across the bottom because that is what a liquid will do if poured into the container. It'll take up the entire shape of the bottom of the container. And of course, we wanna put another row in here. Your artwork does not have to be perfect, but it does have to be good enough to be able to articulate that this is indeed a liquid. Now, if you are going for crazy perfection, you may even wanna throw in the curvature of a liquid, which you guys know is called the meniscus. Now, when I look at this model that I just drew here, and I compare it to that of a solid, one thing should jump out at you immediately, and that is the fact that the solid did not take the shape of the container and is in those neat rows, which we know is called a lattice. Your liquid will not do that. So make sure that it is clear that you are looking at a solid versus a liquid or a liquid versus a solid based on the way you draw the particle model. All right, on to gases. Now gases will have the general properties of having variable shape and variable volume, meaning that the shape and the volume can indeed change. Gases can be compressed. We can see that there's a ton of space that are between the particles and that allows them to get squeezed together as you can see here with this little piston that's coming down. One of the other properties we're gonna see of gases is that they will always spread out evenly and take the shape of any container and they will completely fill it. Now, if you have ever sprayed perfume or cologne in the air, you know that you don't smell it immediately across the room, but as a little bit of time goes on, we have diffusion that happens for gases and our particles will spread out evenly so they are all equidistant from one another. Now, let's talk a little bit about movement. One of the interesting things you will see about gases, and we certainly go into this in our gas laws chapter, which is gonna be later on in the year, is that gases will always move in straight lines and the particles will collide with the walls of whatever container that they are in. They'll also collide with each other. Now, all of these collisions create something called gas pressure. And that gas pressure is due to all of those collisions. The more collisions you have, the greater the pressure will be. That's a little preview of our gas laws unit, which will be coming up later. So if we want to draw the particle model of a gas, it's a little bit more complicated than the solid or the liquid, but not so far that you can't do it. There are some things that you want to think about. First is we want to put five or six particles into the drawing because you got to make sure that you at least understand it's a gas. And we want to fill the container. Now you may say, how do five or six particles fill the container? Well, remember, there are space between all those particles. So I'm gonna put in five particles and I'm gonna spread them out equidistant in here. We wanna show that they're moving, so I'm gonna put these little tails in. That show movement. And after you've done that, we are finished. So that is the particle model of a gas. So here's a states of matter general properties summary. Make sure if you have any gaps in your notes, you can fill them in now. And of course, if there was anything that was unclear during the lesson, anything that you were wondering about, or anything that just needed a little bit more explanation, please make sure you bring those questions to the burning questions segment tomorrow in the beginning of class. That is where we always cover the important stuff and hit whatever you want to talk about from last night's lesson. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace out. That's all, folks.